Right now, the so-called doomsday cult bomb, Lori Vallow Daybell, is being held in isolation in Arizona. That is after her extradition from Idaho. We just received this video of her perp walk, which happened early Wednesday morning. There she is, this long trip uh, from Idaho. They got in around just after midnight. And uh, there she is being escorted in by the Maricopa County Sheriff's deputies. Uh, and uh, that is where she was searched and given a new uniform. During yesterday's press conference, the sheriffs shared a few details about her transfer. What was her demeanor like while, during this process? I just, I understand that she was very sociable the entire trip, talked quite a bit. About what? Oh, that's between the deputies, the courts, and the prosecutor, apparently. I don't know that she gave any specific statements related to the investigation, but I just know that they said she was very chatty. Yeah, <laughs> very chatty. There she is. Uh, Valade Bell set to be arraigned Thursday. This is in relation to her fourth husband, Charles Vallow's death. She's also accused of conspiring to kill her niece's ex-husband, Brandon Boudreaux. She's already mm -hmm. serving multiple life sentences for the deaths of her two children, Tylee, JJ, and of course, Chad's wife, Tammy. So, uh, what do we think here? This next case is a different one. Murray Pereira and Joe Asted with us. Joe, if, what do you think? Would, would you want to be on that field trip with Cult mom dri driving cross country and yeah. having her chat you up? Not at all. And that was a long ride. Oh, yeah. And you got to think, she's a female. And, you know, you have to make sure she eats, she goes to the bathroom, she has water. And if she's chatting, then you got to worry about what she's saying. So that's not a trip that I would want to take, not for that long with her. <laughs> no, not at all. The uh, case that is pending now in, in Arizona, the one that, that is now going to begin likely sometime next year. Um, it's a different case, Marie, and the prosecutors in Arizona took their time to, to go to the grand jury in this because it's a different case. Alex Cox did it. He admitted to do it. He says it was, uh, it was self-defense. There's him explaining his version of the story to police. Why is she being accused of murder? I guess after the fact, when they realized the degree of depravity between her and Chad and what they did to those children, they circled back and they, they are going to avenge the death of Chad's wife and then now the fourth husband. That case, this case is going to be very difficult because the murderer, the alleged murderer, is not around. And she, they have to prove that what happened that day was planned. Mm -hmm. They lured him to the house. They pretended that he attacked, it, um, he attacked them yeah. when they did not. There were no witnesses because the teenage preteen door. Dead right. Too. And so, yes, yeah, Tylee told her version of the story uh, that they got in the fight with the over the yes. baseball bat. She's dead. She can't now clarify this. Exactly. However, if everything comes in, the whole Chad, Tylee, uh, JJ dead in the backyard story, and Tammy being shot, now a juror's gonna be like, all right, well, now I can see, now I can see it. But you have to get that in. You have to get that in. Is that relevant? Is that <laughs> probative? Or is that extremely prejudicial? And is that really putting a guilt stamp on them before the jurors even have a chance to look at it in an impartial way? I don't think everything is going in. And again, they don't have any way of proving intent, premeditation, luring. It's not a slam dunk for the state because the brother's dead. And the only witness to it, the little girl who they might have made flip over if she was around, totally. is gone. Yeah. Right. So how are they proving that? Right. Based and on past cases and past behavior, the Constitution may prevent that. Evidentiary rules may prevent that. 404B evidence may prevent that. We'll see what a judge says. Oh, that'll be um, right um, at the beginning. And also mental um, acuity, you know, she was deemed incompetent in Idaho for a very long period of time. But Joe, she seemed to be very, in that first court appearance, with it. And apparently if she's chatting away with the officers, that conversation could become important. So while they may have been annoyed by it, they're also listening and, and have to report back. Yeah, and that's why I wouldn't want to be a part of that because you know <laughs> at the end of the day you're going to get called in, you're going to have to come and speak to the prosecutor, you're going to have to speak to the, the, the judge, and now all of a sudden now you're a part of this case. Right, if she said anything either way it might help the defense, um, you'll yeah. be in a courtroom. and. Uh, 
Yeah, it's a whole thing, and, and uh, it's still at the very beginning. Again, she is expected to be arraigned next week, and uh, we will have that for you.